Well, hi everyone. This is Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child. We are in the middle. Actually, we've just sort of started. We've only had one in the series for the month of May. And what I am doing um, for the next several weeks is I am talking about how to homeschool multiple kids. I do have, there are some of you, even one of my speakers, Katie Wolf, has an only child. But for the most part, most of you have multiple kids, multiple ages. How do you balance it all? What in the world do you do? So today I'm going to be talking about how do we teach them together. And I'm going to give you some ideas. I'm going to give you some resources of things that you can go and learn a little bit more as well. So let's start talking about that. The first thing I said, and it's in the description, but if you are listening to the live or if you are listening to the replay, let us know if there is if you actually do teach your kids together and maybe what subject area or how you do that. So I've got three different areas that I want to talk about. The first one is something that I call family time. We started this the second year we started homeschooling. I think other people call it morning basket and morning time and whatever, but I called it family time because basically what we did is we had our devotions, our Bible time at the breakfast table, family devotions. And then we all got ready and right here on the other side of that wall right there um, is our living room. And we would all sit in that living room. Family time was really centered on read aloud choosing good books that's how it really got started but what i realized were there were some other things i wanted to do so over time it evolved and it gave me a chance to teach all three of my kids together and hunter could have been like i don't know seven years old gentry could have been 10 and 12 they were at different ages and so we did different kinds of things let me just say it was centered on read aloud a lot of times that would allow me to be able to read a book aloud based on our history time period because all my kids no matter how old they were they were all studying the same time period in history if your kids are all studying their own that is the first thing i would encourage you to do is to find one time period and let them study it at the same time so that's a lot so that would include when we read aloud we could cover history we could cover literature we could cover writing now we didn't actually write but we did write afterwards and i'll share a few ideas about things that i did in writing well let me just share them right now if they were young like hunter maybe he wasn't quite ready to write a narration he would do copy work so maybe i would take the book let me just pick a book okay and actually, this is one of Hunter's top 10 books when I asked him in high school. It's Freedom Train. It's about Harriet Tubman. And maybe we had read this chapter here, and I may have him just copy this paragraph right here. And so that may be one thing. I might, there were times I would um, use this for dictation, and the kids, the girls, would actually have to write it out listening to me talk. They may use it for narration to write down what the story, what happened. Or they may move it a step further. And if you've listened to me talk at any time, it's reading journals. And reading journals is writing about what you've read or about what you've heard in your read aloud. So it may be she was out in the middle of the woods and using the North Star to, um, to get her, her, you know, to get those people across the border. So. Those are just a few ideas centered on read aloud during that one hour. 30 minutes, the last 30 minutes was always our reading. It was, I was very religious about doing that. Other things that we did during this time, and it varied according to whatever I felt like was most important. I didn't have someone telling me, do this textbook and do this stuff right there. No, I got to watch my kids and see what they needed. We would do uh, poetry reading, and the kids would pick fun poems out of books like A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. We would do art. Sometimes I use this Come With Me, Come Look With Me series. Super easy. Really, even high schoolers might enjoy it, but you just open it up. Here's a picture, and then here are some questions you can ask, and here's some background information. Same thing, you just turn the page, there's another picture. You can talk about who did it, that's all the information, where it is. Some questions and some background. You might read the background first and then ask the questions. There's about four or five books in this series. Another type of art book are these fun little books, Waiting for Filippo. He was the life of Renaissance architect 
Filippo Brunicelli. And it's all about him building a dome, but this is actually a fun one because it is a pop-up book. And at the end, you learn all about, you're going to learn math and science and everything when you study this. Uh, where is it? I thought there was a dome. Well, there we've got a fortress, a castle. Somewhere in here is a dome. I know that is the ending, and I think that's in Florence. But anyway, yeah. Um, and so that's sort of a picture. It's just a fun way to introduce history, art, science, math, all sorts of things. The other thing we would do is sometimes we would listen to classical music together, and that would be music together. It is really not hard to teach your kids. It doesn't matter how old they are. I would find some fun books like this box, Goldberg Variations, and it is just a story about Bach. And you learn about Bach as well as his um, his music. So those are just a few things. We would sometimes, if we were working on a Bible study once a week, we would talk about whatever the kids had learned. Now, I'm probably going to butcher your name, uh, but Alita or Aleta, if it was Spanish, asked a question. And I don't know what's going on there. But um, she talked about how do we homeschool when we have guests in our family? I would encourage you, yes, that isn't necessarily how do we homeschool together, but it could be. I would say when you have guests in your family, take the pressure off and take a break. You could still read your books. You could do family time every day because you're doing it all together. It's not like you're telling them to go sit and do this worksheet and that worksheet and read this book. She was talking about how the kids wouldn't, be focused and I can understand when my parents okay we lived in Idaho for four years and they came and visited us a couple times did I keep on with the exact same homeschool schedule when my parents were there no my sister came to visit me I think Steve's brother came to visit I mean there were many times we had people come to visit we just stop now if you have visitors coming every other week you may have to come up with a different plan but when we had visitors come to visit us, this was a chance to build relationships with the people there. So we could still read aloud. They may work for a little bit, but we were on a very relaxed schedule. It, that's just how I handle things. Um, and you know what? We didn't homeschool year-round. My kids didn't forget anything. They all have great jobs. They all have college degrees. Hunter won awards like crazy because we put him in high school for three years. Um, and so... They didn't miss out, is what I'm trying to say. And we homeschooled Labor Day to Memorial Day, and we took the summers off. They kept learning, but they weren't doing our traditional homeschool. All right, number one, family time. Number two, combine your kids in subject areas. I would love to know if you have ever combined your kids in subject areas. Leave a comment, whether you're listening to the live or whether you're listening to the replay. Leave a comment and let me know if you have, what did I do? The very first year I homeschooled, we did send Hunter to kindergarten because uh, even though I was a public school teacher, I was like, I got to figure this out. We sent him to a little private school for kindergarten. Ashley and Gentry were in third and fifth grade, and they said so the reading was pretty similar. It was sort of nice because Gentry read above her level and Ashley read at grade level. And so we did American history. They were both in the same history. They were both in the same literature. They were both in the same dictation that I talked about or copy work. All of that was the same. I mean, I didn't worry about it. At the time I was doing math, I wouldn't do that again. I'd wait till junior high to start math. I'm not a whole different subject. But um, they had their own math. We did science together at the same time. We, I mean, we did pretty much everything together probably except for math. You know, and so they had their own things that were fun to do. In high school, we used a humanities program, and it didn't matter what grade you were in in high school, you went through whatever time period we were, because they had an ancient, uh, Middle Ages, Renaissance Reformation, an early American explorers, and then modernity, four years. And so Hunter popped in in modernity. That's when he popped in. He was in ninth grade. Gentry was in 12th grade. And they went through modernity together and pretty much did the same thing. Were my expectations different? Yes, when he wrote his research paper, I had different expectations of Hunter writing his first research paper and Gentry writing her fourth research paper. Yes, but they were doing similar activities. 
That simplifies my homeschool a lot. Um, Bible studies, family devotion, we always started. I started when the kids were little, when Steve sort of got on board, and he'll tell you the story. He took care of it, and at breakfast, that is when we had our family devotions. Does that mean we never talked about God or the Bible the rest of the day? No, but that was our focused time for us to sit around the table and learn a little more about God. Writing. I already said, my kids would have the same topic or the same assignment, but I had different expectations of them. Now, I am going to be talking a lot more about this in two weeks. I think it's two weeks. There is a Charlotte Mason inspired um, conference. And the talk that I'm going to be giving is how Charlotte Mason helped me simplify my homeschool. The things I have just shared right here today are some of the same ideas, but we're going to dig deeper into them. And if you are interested in joining us at that conference, there is a link in the description. You can save $5 this week with the code that's in the description. I have a bonus gift. I don't have that all included there, but I would really encourage you. It is live Eastern time, I think from 12 o'clock to six o'clock, but you still get all the recordings for life. And so there's some, there are like 39 speakers, I think. Anyway, it's a really good, well put on presentation. Charlotte Mason is all about intentional homeschooling. She is all about reading real books like I just shared with you, using poetry, probably a little more serious than this. And I did read serious poems. I read the serious poems, um, but reading real books and not using textbooks and not and treating our kids as human beings and not just containers that we dump a bunch of information in. Highly recommend her um, that conference. That is, I think, the 16th, so it's like in two weeks. Um, how Charlotte Mason helped me simplify my homeschool. There are so many other subjects. Look for the email I sent this morning. I told you all about it. All right, so family time, combining kids in different subject areas and reducing and relaxing some of our expectations of what is expected in our homeschool. Third one, it's a little different, but I like it. It is what we did. I'm telling you things that we actually did in our homeschool. I'm not just making, like reading a bunch of stuff and telling you, oh, I read this. This would be a good idea for you. No, I'm telling you things we really did. The third one is we had a family business. My kids learned a lot of skills. They learned a lot of communication skills, relationship skills, character traits like work ethic, perseverance, integrity, problem solving. When my kids went to college, I remember Gentry. We were about five minutes from here going to my parents and she said, Mom, thank you so much for what you did in our homeschool and high school. I went, yeah, thank, wow, thank you. She goes, I was so much more prepared for college than my friends were. One, she had a work ethic. She basically ran our entire shipping department in our family business. Now, our family business looked different back then than it does right now. Pretty much everything I have right now is all digital and online. I ship things occasionally, but I've really, even with IEW, the writing program that we used all throughout our homeschooling, I don't ship it. I, I mean, I had someone that would work for me when the kids were gone, and I mean, in August, she'd have 20 to 50 orders to go ship out. Now I just recommend it and I will get a small commission if you actually buy after you see my recommendation. Why do I mention real life? Because if you have multiple kids, we can all work together in a family business. In a family business, we teach our kids real life skills. I've already mentioned the character qualities. They actually, not only that, they learn business skills. When they all took um, uh, accounting, because they all took different business classes. When they took accounting, they all went, oh, QuickBooks makes sense now. They had been using an accounting program. They knew the process. All of a sudden, the big picture from their accounting class made sense. Debits and credits, income and expenses, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, all of that made a lot more sense. And so they they learn real life skills that they can actually use. Hunter has his own business right now. If you haven't heard me or haven't heard me interview him, his first client's in Hawaii. So poor thing, he's over in Hawaii surfing every night when he finishes work. But, you know, he, he was like, yeah, I don't know. And as we started talking, he's like, you're right, mom. 
that bookkeeping, those things that I learned working with you, it really did help me prepare for this. Now, there's a lot more strategies that go on. Now, so why am I saying this? Summer is right around the corner. If you have ever thought about having a family business, summer would be a great time to investigate. Let your kids brainstorm some ideas and maybe start a small online business. Tomorrow and Wednesday, I am giving a live class called Five things you must have to get started in your online business. And you can go to familyebiz.com slash five things, the number five. It's actually in the description. And sign up. It is completely free. I was just checking to see um, comments and stuff. I would love for you to come. I am going to be talking about real strategies, practical, but I'm also going to talk about how do we make a decision about where to go. If you already have a business and it's just not making any money, this will be a great place. Maybe your teenager wants to start their own business. Sign them up for this class. I'm serious. It would be a great class for them to reevaluate. I will have a handout ready tomorrow, and that way they can count this as homeschool. They can watch the class, and I highly recommend getting on live. I've got some little prizes I'm giving out during the class. Um, and yes, we will have an offer, a course that if your teenager wants to get started, this might be a course that you could actually sign them up and they could get started and know exactly what to do and reduce the learning curve. I'm going to tell you pretty much everything I've learned when it comes to marketing. On, and marketing is not selling something that people don't want. It is listening. That's why I'm saying my kids learn relationship skills. It is paying attention to what their readers, what their followers, like Hunter, and he's marketing these this clothing and this stuff for Slow Yourself Down. He is listening to the people that are following him, and then they are providing things that those people would like to have or need or solves their problem. So there's a lot in there, and I'm not going to go into all of that. That's a whole different story. So family business. So there are three things, three ways that you can teach your kids together. Family time, an hour every morning, half of it, 30 minutes is read aloud. The other half is up to you, whatever is important to you. Combine your kids in different subjects. Now, I understand a first grader and an 11th grader may not be at the same level. They could both be studying American history. Wouldn't that make life easier? Um, and then third, start a family business. Or let your teen start a teen business. Fun, fun thing to do. All right, that is all I have. I've got the links in the description if you're interested in the Charlotte Mason Inspired um, Conference or if you're interested in five things you must have. Um, it's actually called five things you must have in place to get your business to the next level or just get started. So whether you've started and you're not where you want to be, or if you haven't even gotten started, you might as well start off on the right foot. All those links are right there in the description. Uh, thanks so much for spending time with me. Y'all have a great day. I'm Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child.